Hi, I'm Philip. Let's talk about extruders. No, no, no. Let's talk about calibration. First, what do we calibrate on the jelly box or any printer that you might build? We calibrate the extruder and you should never calibrate anything else. In the olden days of RepRap, do-it-yourself, building 3D printers, people got used to calibrating all sorts of things. And it was mostly because they didn't have access to good components. Today we do have good quality components and so any sort of calibration you're gonna try to do on X, Y or Z axis is gonna just make things worse, really. <laughs> the extruder is a different beast though. In order to understand the rest of this video, you need to have at least a basic idea of how stepper motors work. Let's look into that. The defining feature of stepper motors is that they move in specified increments called steps. They are motors optimized for precision rather than speed. The length of each step depends on the motor. Jellybox uses motors that have 200 steps per full rotation, which would be 360 degrees, meaning that every step would have 1.8 degrees. And these are very common motors, even though 400 steps per full rotation is also pretty common. In reality, things are actually a bit more complicated. The drivers coordinate the motors in micro-stepping mode, which further subdivides the full step, but that's irrelevant for this video. Next thing we have to look at is how does the rotational motion of the motor translate into linear motion on the printer. For example, on X and Y axis, we have these pulleys with belts wrapped around them. That's a pulley and that's a belt. As the pulley rotates, the belt gets wrapped around and thus the rotational motion translates into linear motion. So far, so good. Next thing we need to look at is how slicers work or what slicers do at a very basic level. A slicer, of course, slices the object into layers and then divides the layer into lines. It figures out the length of each line it needs to print and then it calculates the volume that the extruder needs to extrude in order to get that line. The slicer does know how to get to volume of filament extruded because it knows the diameter of the filament, in our case 1.75 millimeters. So the slicer will tell the printer to extrude a specific length of filament to get the volume that it needs. I'm sure you see the trouble now. The slicer wants length, linear distance, but what the stepper motor understands is degrees, rotational motion. So in the printer, there is a coefficient that defines this relationship between steps and millimeters. And it's literally in steps per millimeter. And you can check that in your settings. Go to settings, motion, scroll all the way down, and you'll see that there's X, Y, Z, and E steps per millimeter. E would be extruder in our case. That's what we want to calibrate. Of course, the way extruder works is there is a drive gear with teeth on the right side, and there is a bearing pushing the filament into the teeth. And as the motor rotates, the filament is being pushed down. This value, 140, was I recording at all? Does nothing else than say for every one millimeter, for every one millimeter the filament needs to be pushed down, the extruder motor will rotate the drive gear 140 steps, or micro steps in our case. I still haven't really explained why do we need to calibrate the extruder unlike X, Y, and Z axis. There's a bunch of things about the extruder that are just different piece to piece. First being the hot end. Every hot end has a slightly different drag coefficient on the inside, different friction, just based on the minute differences within manufacturing tolerances of the physical parts. That's one thing. Second thing would be the teeth of the drive gear. 
they are again slightly different and a slightly different diameter will lead to a different length of filament being pushed down. Another thing that's different would be the tension of the spring which you can adjust yourself. Depending on the filament that you're using you might want to be using less or more tension. This would be driving the filament deeper into the teeth and thus effectively making the diameter of the drive gear pushing the filament down lower, uh, smaller, and thus changing the length extruded again. But all of this pales in comparison with the filament. That's why we need to calibrate the extruder for most part. Every filament has a different diameter. We say it's 1.75, but in reality it ranges quite wildly between manufacturers between 1.74, 1.76 easily, and sometimes even between different spools from the same manufacturer. And that's, for, and that's from reputable sources. I'm not even talking about oval, not even round filaments you can get on eBay for very, very cheap, if you wish so. This kind of difference in the diameter of the filament actually results in quite a large volume of the difference in the extrusion. So if you want repeatable results between spools of plastic, between different manufacturers, between printers, between extruders, we have quick swap extruders, so for us it's also between extruders, you really need to calibrate each spool to each extruder. Now, do you have to do that? No you will get good enough results with a wide array of plastics and extruders with the default settings that we input into the jelly box. If you, if you just want nice pieces, strong pieces, whatever, most of the time you'll be fine. However, if you need dimensional accuracy or if you really want you know, the best quality and more importantly, repeatable quality, you will need to get into calibration. I know I have talked for a crazily long time without actually doing any calibration, but there's one more thing we need to get on the table, and that is what variables are we going to be using to calibrate our printer. There's three. <laughs> there's, there's three variables that affect the extrusion directly. First and foremost, E steps per millimeter. Second, the filament diameter. Third, the flow multiplier or extrusion multiplier. Funnily, they all affect the same thing deep down. The only way controller can tell the printer what to do is by affecting the steps per millimeter. So we have three variables describing the same thing. And that can be confusing. So let me present a strategy to use all these variables to their best potential. First, the filament diameter. I just like to keep it constant at 1.75 and basically take it out of the equation. One less thing to worry about. I use different slicers, different printers. I just keep the filament diameter the same everywhere and I don't worry about a thing. Some people suggest that you actually measure every spool you want to print. Uh, you know, you measure it 10 different places and take average of that and then input that value into your slicer. Uh, as 1.74 or 1.55. The trouble with that approach is that you need to have a micrometer. Normal vernier digital calipers are just not precise enough. And it also means that you have to re-slice the model every time you want to print something because the filament diameter is set in slicer. So it's awful for reusing G-code. Number two, E-steps per millimeter. This will be our main calibration tool because it's the most convenient one. You can even change the steps without stopping the print. If you're printing over USB, you can be sending a G-code to change the steps mid-air and be observing the extrusion and tweaking the value to its perfection. You can set the steps in Slicer by sending in G-code directly as part of the start script. You can edit any existing G-code by putting new steps per millimeter G-code at the very beginning of it. And you can change the steps using the control on the printer itself. So it's the most 
robust is the most flexible way of changing things. We're going to use the e-steps per millimeter to differentiate between different spools of filament and potentially between different extruders, if you have many. And lastly, the flow multiplier and the extrusion multiplier. Extrusion multiplier is in slicer. And I use that to perfect my top and to perfect my top layers. Basically, we're gonna use the calibration process and the e-steps to get a specific distance of filament extruded. And then we're gonna use the extrusion multiplier in slicer to precisely tweak the thickness of the lines. Once you figure it out for a specific printer, extruder, it remains pretty much the same. For Jellybox, it's between 0.85 and 0.9 for basically all the slicers out there. Because this also depends on a slicer. That's why, that's why there is a little tweak. And finally, the flow. This is the same as the extrusion multiplier, but you set it using the controller on the printer itself. This setting is convenient, but it doesn't last. If you turn the printer off and turn it on again, it's gonna be gone. So it's best to affect just a specific print. For example, I'm observing the first layer. I, it's not extruding enough. I need it to stick better and I'm too lazy to change the height of the first layer. I'm too lazy to go and re-slice my model. So I'm gonna just temporarily turn up the flow to get more filament coming out. And when I'm done with it, it's gonna reset or I can reset it manually as well. Okay, I've talked for a very long time. Let's do some calibration. How to calibrate the extruder to a specific roll of filament? Prerequisites. Make sure that the spring in your filament feeder is properly tensioned and that your drive gear is clean of any debris or stray pieces of filament. A wonderful tool to clean your drive gear is a pair of sharp tweezers. Let's get to it. You're going to need a spool of filament for which you're trying to calibrate and a marker. And that's it. First, position the extruder so it's nice and accessible. I like to have it in about homing position on x-axis and a bit higher on z. Then heat up the nozzle to the printing temperature of the material you're trying to calibrate with. In my case, that's PLA, 210 degrees Celsius. Once the nozzle is heated up, load the filament. Now go to Adjustments, Extrude Retract, and an extrude 5 or 10 millimeters of filament. Repeat extruding 5 or 10 millimeters of filament until you get an even flow. Once the flow is even, grab your marker and mark the filament at the marking line and immediately afterwards extrude 100 millimeters. While the filament is disappearing in the hot end, I find it beneficial to lightly hold it in my fingers to feel the pulse of the extruder motor. When the extrusion is finished, grab your marker again and mark the filament at exactly the same spot, the same marking line. Now the time of measurement comes. Unlock your feeder, pull, up the, pull out the filament, and measure the distance between the two lines, between your two marks, using the metric measuring gizmo on top of your jelly box or any other metric measuring gizmo. So let's figure out the new E-steps per millimeter. What we wanted to extrude was 100 millimeters, but what we got was 111 millimeters. The old E-steps per millimeter are, let's check it in the settings. Go to your settings, motion, scroll all the way down, and there it is. E-steps per millimeter, 
140. So now we're gonna divide what we wanted with what we got to get basically a correction ratio. This is about 0 0.9. Now if we take the old E steps and multiply it with the correction ratio, we get 126. And that's our new E steps per millimeter. Done. Let's put that in our settings. Also, I'm going to write 126 right on the spool. When I want to print with this spool in the future, I will set my E steps to 126. This way, I will get repeatable results between different spools. I just need to calibrate every spool that I want to print with. And that's it. Congratulations for calibrating your studio. Oh, 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 oh,